Welcome back to the Blue Door Pop Thunderdome for another boo. With Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87 Best Daily Podcast, a show about everything and absolutely nothing at all. Coming at your ass five days a week. Oh, far too kind. Far too kind. I love you. Since Shotgun is Uncle Nick. Follow him on Twitter and Nick Sunday. Hey, how's it going? Ha- have you, um, how much Gatorade and Pedialyte did you have to drink to replenish your fluids after you crying your eyes out? Because of Manny, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Manny? I, um, I, I, I did not cry. Um. I had some harsh words after after the match over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> the laugh track. Um, no, it was. Um, I did not cry. I did not you cry are one pathetic. You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. In fairness, uh, um, um, that jabroni horn dominated the fight, especially that ninth round. Um. <laughs> I'll give Horn credit. He he didn't do too bad. I um he definitely had a lot of stamina. This was a very fun and exciting fight to watch. However, I do think that Manny um had control most of the time and Boy, here's here's what we're gonna do, Mike. Uh, I obviously can't cannot beat this uh, Tasmanian devil or whatever island he's from. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna headbutt him right in his his friggin' little head. And he's gonna bleed. I, yeah, yeah, that was kind of crazy. That was a big gash. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of uh, a lot, a lot of blood. Um, this was a, a very ex- just to put it out there. This was a pretty fun, exciting fight to watch. Um, I was very impressed with Horn. Mm. Obviously, I'm Filipino, so I was Team Pacquiao. Yeah, this, and- this was not uh, Pacquiao Mayweather where they just danced mainly because uh, Manny had a torn labrum. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. Manny. Manny looked good. He looked tired though, but um. You know he held us all. You know, mm. um, for being thirty-eight, you know I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't mess with Manny at all. I mean, he definitely, he definitely still had some punches in him, and, um, you know, I thought it should have gone to Pacquiao, and obviously they listed the scores first, mm-hmm. and we all kind of, and I think a lot of people were like, oh yeah, Manny got this, but then, um, when the guy started talking about the new champion Jeff Horn and seeing Jeff Horn celebrate, um. I may I, I may have pooed myself and then I then I had, then I had to call a room service because I was staying at a hotel at the time and then uh, then some words I said some words I I kind of some some non uh, non PG words and I got upset for a while. It's okay. Uh, Jeff Horn looks and sounds like uh, a, a guy who should be like a middle manager at some mid range company like uh, uh, like CPG Hospitality Services. Um, yeah, uh, during the first half of the fight, I kept calling him Joe Horn, and then um, <laughs> like then they kept saying the name Jeff. I'm like, who's Jeff Horn? And I'm like, oh, that's because yeah, Joe was. Horn is the Saints receiver who did that great cell phone uh, touchdown dance. I forgot about that one. Yeah, uh, but the real reason why we're here is uh, happy post Fourth of July. Oh, Because for as much as we shat on this country, especially for what's going on politically, this place is still pretty damn good. I like it. I'm very, uh, you know, we do give it a lot of crap, but it's one of those, like, we should be grateful for all the good things that we do get from this but country. Ain't, but, 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 Andy, that's your white privilege talking. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, that is all. Uh, also, what I'm talking uh, is Josh Peltz, uh, Remax Preferred. He's going to be on the show tomorrow. We're going to be talking about some Vikings and uh, you know, just pretty much whatever is going on. It's going to be a good time. Uh, but also, hey, if you're buying or selling right here in the Twin Cities or Minnesota as a whole, he's got you covered. Uh, you know him. I love him because I know him. Yeah. Because uh, Twin Cities real estate market's heating up. As we're we're, uh, heading down the end of summer, people want to get their ass in a new home before the big freeze because winter is coming. Now, all right, so Game of Thrones winter has not come yet. 
It has not come Cause in. Because is this season seven now? Uh, yeah, coming into season seven. Because I remember for, uh, the first season beside Sean Bean before he died, RIP, because Sean Bean dies and everything. It was like, winter's coming. Winter is coming. Oh, winter. Hey, winter's coming. As him came in. What accent was what that? Is, <laughs> it, uh, turned into Rob Schneider. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, Josh, uh, before winter comes, buy or sell your home. He'll get you the best price either way. And uh, give him a call. 763-213-4617. 763-213-4617. JoshPelto.com. So, uh, 4th of July. Uh, and uh, we're just going to pretend that we did all of our 4th of July festivities, even though we're recording this in the morning. It's close enough. And... Uh, yeah, uh, pretty chill. Just going to grill out. Just going to hang. Just going to do all that. I, I I don't do fireworks. I'm not a big fireworks guy. I, not, Nick, I, I know that you're an uh, Asian jungle. Uh, you're, you're a jungle Asian, so I'm sure you're really big into fireworks. <laughs> jungle Asian. Uh, <clears throat> growing up, growing up uh, uh, on the Ascension side of the family, yes, we were very... Really big into fireworks. Yeah. Uh, because there's a there's a big divide. Like Japanese, pretty buttoned up, pretty uh, pretty not not into fireworks. Chinese, super into fireworks. But that's part of their heritage. It's like yelling at <clears throat> an Irishman for being into drinking and fighting. And then as it spreads out, uh, Vietnamese, Laotian, Hmongs, Filipinos, I think are super into fireworks. Because it goes boom. And it reminds them of uh, their jungle fighting days of uh, fighting off the, the, the white men, the Americans, y- your people at the end of the 18, 1800s and the Vietnamese in, in the 1960s through 70s. Okay, for the record, my family has not fought against the Americans. My, most of my family has joined um, the U.S. Army and Navy, but that's uh, another tale. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's an inside job. You're just going to turn on them. <laughs> inside job. Uh, I don't know what it was with our family and, um, you know... Um, living in Minnesota our whole lives, you know, fireworks aren't exactly uh, um, the safest things to have because um, obviously they're illegal in the state. But we, you know, we always found well, no, no, they're not illegal. The good ones are illegal. Yeah, the good ones are illegal. <laughs> but um, anyway, the what a good thing about Wisconsin is that you know, you know, Hudson, you know, right next to the Twin Cities. Yeah. Hudson, right next to Twin Cities, is where we get all our good fireworks. Uh, th- there's no reason to ever go to Wisconsin ever again anymore. I don't know. I, have, I haven't looked up any new updates. Uh, have they approved the um, good fireworks yet? I feel like we talked uh, early in the season about um, they're going to try to pass some laws so we can get the good stuff. But um, the big thing is that a few years ago we stopped firing off uh, – Fireworks because uh, a lot of neighbors uh, don't care to do that. And, uh, you know, if you still live in the Twin Cities, sometimes you have the cool neighbors that don't mind that, you know, that, you know, Fourth of July weekend, uh, you know, late night shooting off some bottle rockets, some uh, Roman candles. Mm. You know, sometimes people don't mind that. But um, where our family used to do it, uh, neighbors started complaining. So we um, haven't um, shot off fireworks for about uh, five, seven years. Uh, I think that that is whole knowing your neighbors, knowing your your neighborhood thing. Because I, I understand it's like we're celebrating our independence. This is America. This is my land. Don't trade it on me. But yeah, there's definitely times when you can be a dick about it, especially when you're lighting things off on a weeknight, uh, like a week before Fourth of July. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I know that you're like, hey, I just came back. I just came back from Iowa or Wisconsin or Tennessee, and I just got me these brand new M80. It's not even an M80. It's M85. That means it's five times better. I don't know how math works. And it's like, <laughs> I'm going to light this off at 1.15 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. <laughs> That's so far. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, being older now, I kind of I can see that a lot mm. in you know, yeah, um, you guys and you know, having family that have younger kids, you know, uh, you know, and obviously uh, with pets, you know, it it can scare the crap out of them. Well, you gotta know someone who kind of lives in the the rural, maybe outside suburbs, or you know, obviously if people have cabins, you know, uh, way out in the woods, you know, go well, to town. But. Yeah, that that's fine, but also you have to be. I understand that a lot of dogs uh, react to fireworks, and I mean that's fine, but. Stop playing. Um, but also, on 4th of July, 
they get a free pass. And I think we got lucky. Got we have two dogs that, well, they bark at everything except for fireworks, which That's is so odd. Weird. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah, yeah. Cody, Cody's in here. Like, I, I'm pretty sure a squirrel took a duty two blocks down the street. <laughs> but fireworks. <laughs> Like he would be the perfect dog to have in a war zone, because <laughs> he'd just be like, oh, "Yeah, whatever." You guys need me to sniff some things? Ah, oh, there we go. Squirrel. Ah, oh, then just go ape shit. Yeah. Uh, but fireworks injuries are very common, and I I do not feel any remorse at all. And the 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 news always frames things like. Uh, when uh, when Darwin sort of takes over and people weed themselves out when they do something stupid, it's like, oh, in uh, local news, a, a man has died after uh, crashing his ATV uh, because he was trying to run underneath a, a, a park semi, a Fast and the Furious style. He's decapitated. He'll be interned at, at Memorial Parkway. And it's like, nah, I don't feel I don't, I don't feel bad for that guy. Uh, also, the 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 dude who. Blew his head off because he he put a fireworks mortar on top of his head. He, oh tr- yeah, I yeah. that. He's trying to wear it like a uh, Abraham Lincoln, you know, a stovepipe hat. Yeah, I have zero remorse for that guy. I bet they tried suing the fireworks company. Probably, and I bet you the fireworks company settled because uh, it, it's better than having that hassle out there. But I yeah, I saw this on. yesterday. So, guy, <laughs> American garb. Throw a fireworks. This is not the dump part. This is the dump part. That's all. So now he, he has two mitts. Uh, it looked like homemade mitts of you, you got a handle, and then it's surrounded by Roman candles on the outside. And then his drunk, fat, bald buddy is uh, lighting things up with a blowtorch. So now he, he's basically trying to turn himself into a transformer, mm-hmm. which ironically... Uh, I, 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 I'm kind of rooting for him to turn himself into a transformer because if he blows his hands off, he'll have to get robotic hands. Er, 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 er. Dummies can't. in disguise. He can't afford. Right, so now he's got Roman candle hands. Yeah, I've seen stuff like this with uh, with like machine guns and uh, like people taking guns. And- yeah. Oh, a couple of them fell. Yep. Now they're now they're blowing up. Going to duct tape them enough. Uh, also, this looks like a a pretty nice uh, neighborhood, and uh, the video is dated from April twenty fifth, so I assume it's from last Fourth of July. Uh, but they're doing the in the middle of the day. I I really hope this is a weekday and not like a holiday. Yeah, it, it very well could be. Yeah, just uh, some random uh, Tuesday work day. Uh, some guy knocks off uh, at 4 o'clock uh, early from work, and then he comes home to this. He's like, what the hell, Todd? Also mow your lawn. The Roman candles are falling off the, the – oh, my God. And that's how you blow yourself up. I'm surprised the camera person never died. <laughs> and that is it. Cool. But not really. I mean, I, I know this might be me coming off as a curmudgeon, but I, I, I don't see it. Like, ce- celebrate America by uh, wasting a bunch of money and sending it to Mexico and China for some. I don't know. I, I, it's, I think it's fun. I think they should. Uh, I don't mind that. Well, you would because you're a jungle agent. Yeah. And, like, the most famous incident is probably uh, Jason Pierre-Paul, defensive end for the Giants. And I'm not going to pull it up, but uh, I, I looked up pictures of his hand pre-surgery. Like when he just came in, that thing looked like uh, uh, if you put an M, uh, no, not M A. If you put a firecracker like in a one of those bacon wrap fillets, except uh, bacon wrap fillets. Yeah, like uh, a little nice little fillet, little, little fillet mignon, 
And then you have the strip of uh, raw bacon around the outside. And then you put the firework in there. And then you blew it up in a box the size of like a cupcake box. You know, how if you get one really nice cupcake, it comes in a box. Set it off in there. And that's what it would look like. You know, the bacon fat will be like the tendons and stuff. And then, you know, the, oh, you, you know what I mean? And, that's uh, what it looked like. Oh, my God. I, I, I looked it up. Oh, my God. Oh, wait. You have to put a thumb in there because his thumb is still quasi intact. I looked yeah. it up, and I totally got that. <laughs> now, his whole story thing, it's a cautionary tale. I think he's actually done some PSAs about it, so he's going about the right way. But he, he, he got two cargo vans full of fireworks. Mm-hmm. Two cargo vans. Like the airport shuttle size vans, you know, the ones that seat 14, you know, the ones that the, um, that the junior college uh, tennis team or not, not even tennis, so it's bigger. Um, the junior college softball team, they take two of them, you know, yeah. doing their rounds, uh, doing the tournament circuit. Yeah, he had two of those, Phil. Like, how come in, in this society uh, some dude shows up with two, two van loads full of explosives and nobody bats an eye? Because those are cool explosives. You have to admit, fireworks. Oh, yeah. man. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Um, so have you? Oh, yeah, good. Um, have you actually? Um, have you have you done fireworks when you were younger? And, oh yeah, kid? I got it on my system because I was twelve. <laughs> um, the most common explosive ones I always remember are the black cats. You know, yeah. the simple. You know, oh. they're, they're not too. Big. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, simple light and you pop. You know, explode. Yeah. Um, I have a good story where uh, me and my buddy Rick were lighting these off, and you know, we were God, we were we were dangerously young. I think we were eight or ten. You know, we just started learning how to use matches, and mm-hmm. I remember an instance where uh, my buddy Rick lit lit a match. He um, lit the fire, uh, the fire, the 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 black cat in his hand, and he threw the match. Yeah. And then I'm shouting, "Oh my God! Throw, he threw the match! He threw the match!" So then he just got rid of it and exploded like <laughs> like like a few feet away. Um, but I'm like, "Damn, that was a close call." Uh, I, I've done the sparklers when a little kid. I've done the Roman candles. Yep. I've done the M80, you know, the, the mortar style. You yep. go over Wisconsin, you think it's like, oh, this is so cool. But then uh, I remembered because uh, I was working at a grocery store as a teenager and, like, spending my entire paycheck on fireworks. I'm like, yeah, this seems kind of dumb. That's a, no, yeah. no. And uh, if it's your thing, cool. Floats your boat. Awesome. And uh, I understand it's the equivalent of spending – um, it, it, spending 300 bucks on fireworks for uh, an evening, sorry, an hour of entertainment is the equivalent of spending you know, 300 bucks to go out to a nice you know, steak dinner with a couple people or uh, a fair to Midland prostitute for an hour of entertainment. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Except it fizzles, it goes out with a bang, and there's a chance you end up in the ER. So th- there's actually a, a, it's actually very analogous buying a bunch of fireworks and then getting a hooker. <laughs> yeah, that was actually pretty easy. I don't think I've ever spent more than a hundred dollars on on fireworks. You know, I think yeah. the simple thirty or forty dollar pack, maybe at most. But yeah. uh, I, I do like when the professionals do it, like when they do a fireworks barge or they do it on a beach, and it's a you know big public spectacle. Uh, there, there's a town near us uh, called St. Charles that that was their big thing. You know, they had a big fireworks display every single year. Uh, they they saved and siphoned off money uh, for it. Um, from budgets and whatnot, and it was awesome. It, it's really cool. But th- it's always bugging me, is that fireworks don't start until it gets dark out. Mm-hmm. And this time of year, it's usually about 10 or 10.30. Yeah. And if you're bringing kids to the fireworks, um, a lot of people have to work the next day because it's going to be a weekday. And it's just like, ah, I'm out here. I'm just waiting for the fireworks. I'm getting bit up by mosquitoes. I'm still kind of. I, I still got half a beer buzz, but my buzz is wearing off, and I'm still plum full of hot dogs. Just start the fireworks. I don't care. Ooh, oh, and fireworks ha- haven't really changed in uh, probably 150 years. Like I, I understand they can do a couple now that is like, ooh, that looks like a cowboy hat. No, except there's. They're still pretty much the same. They got the red, boom. They got the white, boom. You got the blue, bam. Oh, they set up two at the same time. Mind blown. You know, and I, I find that there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Yeah. Um, the only thing I can think of uh, movie-wise is, do you ever see the movie Coneheads? Yeah. And there's a scene where uh, Belda Conehead takes over his fireworks display, and 
you see him with his uh with one little uh rocket that goes up in the air and like um what's his name the guy who looks like Richard Dreyfus shows up he's like oh that's it that's all you got Belda you know I used to do fireworks until you took it over <laughs> good luck outshining me this year with that one rocket the one rocket goes in the air you see a small little spark and obviously because he's Belda Conehead. Uh, futuristic like sonic uh, supernova happens in the sky and everyone like like freezes and like they're in awe. I, I don't mind that fireworks just uh, generally are the same. You know, I don't think Wait, there's need, a need to change it. You know what they need to do? Like, remember when they had the hologram of Tupac at the Grammys or whatever it was? They need to do that with fireworks. Make hologram fireworks? Yeah. To fireworks since fireworks became legal several years ago in Maine. Now, a lot of people in the town of Calais say they're just speechless and in shock and disbelief. Now, we don't know well, exactly... So, uh, this town is spelled C-A-L-A-I-S. And it's obviously an homage to Calais, you know, mm-hmm. the French city. Except us Americans always ruin pronunciations. Calais. Welcome to Calais. Welcome to Calais, Maine, baby. I got Calais. Steve on King. My, all over my feet. Which fireworks became legal, you know, that um, Staples used. But this is actually one of them. And here's an example of it. We were able yeah, to find this mortar. at a local um, fireworks store. And officials say this explosion caused a fatal head injury, which caused him to die instantly. It killed Good. him instantly. Good. Staples had been drinking with friends during the last Shocker. night's 4th of July celebration. Now, officials are stressing the point. Fireworks are not toys, nor are they something to be played with. Now, Maine Fire Marshal Joe Thomas stressed to me that reloadable fireworks are dangerous, especially if they're not used properly. Uh, yeah, so uh, I have zero remorse for this guy. And uh, it, it always bad things happen when uh, guys are in groups and drinking. Like, tell tell me one positive thing that's ever happened from a group of men drinking, besides maybe the Declaration of Independence. Because y- you know they had to get a little li- parched. I was really gonna say that they, they had to get a little parched uh, in that in Freedom Hall in. Uh, in uh, in Philadelphia, yeah, you know, it's ironic that they went to a place called Freedom Hall. You know, they didn't name it after the fact. They're just oh. like, oh, serendipitous. <laughs> Funny, because this always gets me too. Is like the temperature. You know, yes, global warming exists, and uh, we've gone up two degrees since blah blah blah. But temperatures are generally the same now as they were in 1860 and 1700. So these jabronis are in like. Not even three-piece suits, like seventeen-piece wool suits, complete with uh, with uh, w- with radiant barrier knickers and uh, powdered wigs, and they're just sitting inside buildings in the middle of the afternoon with ninety degrees and ninety percent humidity in Philadelphia, with no air conditioning, and just taking it. That's crazy. Yeah, and then they go home at the end of the day. And their wives, who have been in these hoop dresses and bodices and corsets and stuff, and they get it on at the end of the night. That has to be some very stanky lovemaking. Very <laughs> stanky, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that just has to be uh, 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 just a rabid encounter of like two just wild beasts. Maybe that's why they they did it so much back then, because uh, it, when you sweat, the pheromones comes out. So they must have just been rolling in pheromones. How did we get to this conversation? Smooth, <laughs> smooth segue. First Sunday sales in Minnesota. And I, I know it is big, especially on social media. The uh, All the pictures celebrating history here in Minnesota. Whoa. Uh, it, it's funny. It was, it, it was a big thing. And then you, you and I are, are uh, prone to the drink, as mm-hmm. producer Ali would say. Uh, but, the, yeah, I didn't buy anything. You didn't buy anything. You you actually forgot about it. Yeah, I completely forgot about it. And um, it says, I'm very happy this thing passed. You know, I, mm. it was a ridiculous rule, a ridiculous law. Uh, however, I mean, you know, you can buy booze six days a week. And I, you know, um, and, you know, even though this is uh, Fourth of July weekend, I wasn't, uh, uh, you know, I haven't bought booze for quite a while just because, one, I'm living with you and you have ample supply. Thank you for that. Um, but, two, it's just... Uh, yeah, I, you know, it, it's history, yes, to a point, but I mean, you know, it's not like I'm walking on the moon. I'm just, it'd be, you know, I'm going to buy, I'm gonna buy a, you know, a 12 pack of Coors Lighter. I'm mm. going to buy that up, a little bottle of Fireball or something, you know, it's nothing. Well, this was a shoddy rule to begin with because, 
uh, some places have you know no Sunday off sales because obviously you can, you can still go to a bar. It's not like uh, bars are closed on Sundays. But it, it, it started with uh, you know back in 159 years ago. We do not want our man's lips touching the devil's creature on Sundays. Even though you, you know you, you could buy a, a nice a nice bottle of hooch back when they were drinking rye back in the day, and uh, you know that could last you till Sunday. It, 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 your husband's lips is going to be touching the hooch, and also a bunch of other things. That stupid sweat box of <laughs> the whorehouse. <laughs> the whorehouse. Again, going back to the sweat box thing. Everyone must have stank back then. Everyone must have stank, and everything had to smell like campfire because that's how you cooked. That's how you heated your house. You know, there probably wasn't cologne back then, and uh, you know, obviously that's what we're making the point to no deodorant. You yeah. know, so. Um, it could be that thing where, you know, I mean, that could have been the normal smell and no one would have noticed, you know, if it smelled like that all the time, it probably wasn't a problem. It's just now that we're used to like, like me, I put on my degree body odor this morning, you know, like I like smelling like that, you know, and this, I think, I think this, that's just how it was back then. And yeah, and all, okay. all the people in modern times, like they close the book, you know, they close the book, they take it off the reading glass, like, oh. I wish I was back in uh, Century XYZ. Yeah, when he died of me- measles, everyone smelled like B.O. and everything burned. Yeah. Great. Everything burned. Yeah. I mean, people in the 1800s in the middle of summer were heating their house. Like, oh, <sighs> we, we, we have to ward off the winter because winter is definitely coming because this is the real world and not Game of Thrones. I don't know how they got that reference back then. <laughs> the Game of Thrones reference. Yeah. Yeah. I. I oh, by the no- way, outhouses. Yeah. Enjoy. I, I understand uh, you, you read the Anna Green Gables. Wait, no, hold on. Or uh, Little House on the Prairie. Yeah. Because um, yeah. I think a lot of people, they think, uh, when when people say that, like, oh, man, they're living back in the time of Davy Crockett or something, um, they think it's like a camping experience. They think it's like a theme park. Um, he prefers David. I don't, I don't know what his name is. Um, <laughs> you know, and they're like, that's just not how it would be at all. A um, couple more other things to get to, and then we'll get to the news. Uh, hot dog eating contest is coming up. I'm, I'm sure Joey Chestnut will win, whatever. Uh, how many hot dogs do you think you could eat? What? H- how many hot dogs do you think you could eat if you were in that contest? In that contest? Yeah. <sighs> Three? Four? Wait, 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 what's the time frame again? Uh, I'm looking it up right it's, now. It's a minute, right? I, I feel like it's... It, no, not a minute. It has to be quick. Um God, all right. So, um, you know, obviously, I'm a, I'm an eater. I like to eat. Yep. Um, and I've seen I've seen the, the 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 matches all the time. I don't think that those people who do it enjoy it. I feel like like it is a sweaty like you trying to get as much into you as possible without. I enjoy eating. I like I like the taste. I take my time and eat. You know, um, I'm gonna chew and you know. Swallow in a normal pace. That's what not... said. The, uh, Whoa. The, uh, since 2008, it's been 10 minutes. And last year, uh, Joey Jaws Chestnut set the record with 70. 70. Um, uh, quickly remind me. So it's a hot dog, hot dog bun. There's no condiments or anything. Right? Yeah. Well, y- you could put condiments on, except no. Nah. Why, why would you? Yeah. And uh, I'd like a little bit of ketchup, maybe. It, it reminds me what uh, Kobayashi, uh, they did a Freakonomics episode on him. And it was really interesting because uh, everyone was trying to eat as many hot dogs as possible in that time frame. But he was just, he reverse engineered it and tried to figure out how to eat one hot dog quicker. Ooh, so that's when it came up with the splitting the dog in half, soaking it, and then, you know, jamming in. And then, you know, when he does like the head nod thing. Head bob thing to sort of throw it back. Oh my god! Yeah, splitting it in half. Yeah, like he just like whipped it. Oh, I bet you I could do. I could maybe do one a minute. I would say ten. I could, if I trained, I could maybe do twenty. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, because uh, before, because Kobayashi won like a ridiculous number of years in a row, and before that the. So he came over in 2001, uh, set the record of 50, and before that, the record was 25. <laughs> so he, d- he came over and just doubled the record, like uh, NBD, NBD. Oh, oddly enough, the 
the guy who won, let's see here, uh, a couple years in a row before Kobayashi started taking over is also Japanese. A guy named Kazi Toyo the Rabbit arrived. <laughs> Yeah, you know, as I said, I it doesn't seem enjoyable. I like mm. to eat to enjoy myself. So enjoy it, it, and like these people are dunking hot dogs and bread and water, and then just like 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 are they tasting it? Are they using their tongue at all? No, I feel like it's just just swallowing. It's just like just cramming it down down into your body. It doesn't seem enjoyable at all. I mean, that's what a lot of these food eating competitions. I feel. And Nathan's hot dogs are really good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got and, the all beef hot dog. Yeah, and um, you know this is and and I'm not trying to diss this thing at all because this is like a key element of some is the Nathan hot dog um, um, competition. And uh, yeah, over the weekend here, you know, I'm watching on ESPN. I mean, they're showing replays of the last couple of years. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's entertaining. It's you know, I just but as I said, if I put myself in the situation. I like to enjoy hot dogs, and you know, um, if I really want to, I can maybe do ten in a, in ten minutes. What's your um, What's your condiments on hot dogs? Like, what do you like on them? Um, I'm very simple. Um, maybe a little bit of ketchup. It depends. Yeah. Um, I do like if I'm in if I'm ever in Chicago or seeing Chicago friends, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll I I like to um, I like to dabble in the um, Chicago style dog. You know, I can yeah. do. Yeah, but I mean, like, if if I'm in a ballpark at, um, at the Twins game or mm-hmm. Saints game, I keep it simple, just a little light ketchup, and you know, go to town. All right, know? so here's my thing with hot dogs. Since I'm a quasi gourmand, and producer Ali thinks I'm pretentious, except that uh, no. Uh, so grilled hot dogs are obviously delicious, but for for my money, the all, all beef hot dog, natural casing, put it on a uh, on a hot flat top, and just get a nice little. Sear on that outside, have some nice snap to it. Get a steam bun. And here's my trick with hot dogs and brats. Put the condiments on the bun first and then put the hot dog or the brat in. Because yeah, if you top it, all, all, your, all your stuff just falls over or mm-hmm. it gets on your hands and stuff like that. And I, I know you could say, but what about soaking the bun? That thing's going to be gone before it soaks up. So, yeah, get out of here. You know, uh, <clears throat> I've been noticing on shows lately uh, – Shows. I think infomercials are something where they talk about cooking hot dogs. Yep. I've seen some clips like they say the the best way to maximize cooking a hot dog is cutting slits or like weird weird sharp spirals in them or something. It looked really weird. I don't know if you've yeah. ever yeah. experienced or done anything like that. Yeah. No. I don't know. It was something I noticed a lot more this right. year than. But me, uh, even though it's sacrilege, I, I do like ketchup, but also. Yellow mustard and lots, lots of chopped onions. Yeah, that's right. Maybe a little bit of relish. <laughs> not not going full Chicago dog, but you're 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 two thirds of the way there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's it. All right, and also uh, almost there. Uh, we'll wrap up more boo, Lenny Carlson, on this blessed Wednesday. So 2016 sucked for the Vikings and also for a number of other reasons I heard. But it's okay. 2017 is upon us. Vikings fans, let's get going. All offseason, Purple for the Win coming right at you through free agency, the draft, and OTAs and training camp. Here we go. Get the show on 1500 ESPN Podcast One and the Podcast One app. And come back into the Blue Door Pub Studios. And if you didn't get enough burgers in your 4th of July weekend, yeah, stop on into the Blue Door Pub and get their classic, the Jiffy Burger. And what it is, you got Third Pound Patty, then you got Pepper Jack Cheese, uh, Crunchy Peanut Butter, and Thick Cut Bacon, Mayo, and Pickle. And uh, before you knock the peanut butter on the burger, shut your mouth and open your mouth and eat the burger. Because it's an amazing combo. You would not think that would work, but it does. Get it all three Twin Cities locations. St. Paul, Longfellow, University on Como, the BDP.com. So the St. Saint Paul Saints, 
since since they opened up the new stadium, the old stadium was kind of ghetto. It wasn't even in St. Paul. I mean, Energy Park Drive. Oh, yeah, I guess. It's border, it's, it was yeah. on the border. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I guess it is close to snow. Ah, whatever. Uh, but anyway, the new St. Paul Saints Stadium has been open three, four years. Awesome. Uh, love that place. Uh, tried to go a couple times a year. Uh, and we, we went over the weekend and Muggsy's first game. Now, I was a little, yeah, it's like it, it, 7 o'clock start. She usually goes to bed at 8. Is she going to be grumpy? Or is she going to be wah, wah, wah? Like, you, you've seen crying babies at sporting events and mm-hmm. uh, concerts and whatnot. And I, I didn't want her to be that. And I was like, ah, well, I'd be kind of bummed if we had to leave early. But then again, I'm not really emotionally invested in the team. Like, I, I can't name a St. Paul Saints player who's not named Mark Hamburger. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And also... I almost think that, you know, so Hamburger's had a stint with the Bigs. You know, he's been with the Twins. Uh, I think he... Yeah, he briefly. Yeah, yeah, but very, yeah. very briefly. Uh, actually, I don't even know if he made the 25-man. Anyways. But he's such a celebrity here from St. Paul, mm-hmm. pitching for the Saints, that if the Yankees called up, he's like, hey, give me Hamburger. Hamburger, we need you. We're going to put you as a third starter in our rotation. He might be like, I'm good. I'm good here in Pig's Eye. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But it, it's not so much about the the game or the players, uh, the, the Saints lost, whatever. Uh, it, it's about the experience. And I think the Saints get that right. It's a fun atmosphere. The games in between innings are are, are fun. The announcers are, are hilarious as well. And they get it as far as the food and the craft beer. And it, it, it's really good time. Plus, Lower Town, awesome neighborhood. Love that place. Yeah, no, I... You and I have gone to a couple games, and I've uh, I've had a good time. You know, every time it's you know compared to the Twins. I mean, the Twins. If you're someone who doesn't like a lot of people and stuff, and mm-hmm. you know the prices, you know, Twins games might not be for you. But Saints definitely consider a Saints game. Definitely, uh, you know, not as crowded. You know, I mean, there's a good amount of people there. You know, thankfully, obviously, they got to make a little bit of money. But it's it's definitely not as big as uh, t- as Twins games, and you you have a good baseball experience no yeah. matter what. Also, the whole did you know that Bill Murray is part owner? Yeah, that always gets brought up, and uh, also uh, the the other owner, the majority owner, Bill Bill Vec, He seems like he, he he could tilt back a few. Like I, I would love to get drunk with Bill Vec. Uh, I never heard of him. So interesting. Cool. He, ironically, he looks like a Murray brother. He, he, he looks like Brian Doyle Murray. Oh, really? Yeah, a little bit. Maybe yeah. it is Brian. Yeah. Uh, it, it was Muggsy did great. Uh, she walked around the stadium uh, once early in the game just to check everything out. She saw Madonna the pig. I, mm-hmm. I wonder how Madonna, like legit Madonna, feels about having a pig named after her. Like, I understand it's a biblical name, but, uh, you know. Um, so she saw the mascot. That was cool. And then... Yeah, uh, we went there um, with the the mother in law, father in law. Uh, the father in law and I had a couple of refreshments. It was a good time. Also, the not trying to blow up anyone's spot, but the the bartender who you know pours the hard liquor drinks uh, m- must have liked us a little bit because like, can we get a double uh, Jack and Coke and a double uh, Captain Coke? He was like, sure. One, two. Two and three quarter. No, it's good. And um, <laughs> oh, also randomly saw Adam Thielen there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He's just um, see a, a lot of people just stand. Like I, I know they're standing room only tickets, except most of those people stay in the outfield. Those people and what what mo- in the causeways people just stand. Like they probably have tickets, but they're not sitting in the seats. They just stand because mm-hmm. it's a, baseball games are more of a hangout than actually watching the game. It's a little bit annoying when you're trying to get through, but whatever. Yeah, so Thielen was just standing there with a group of friends, and the only thing I realized that the only thing uh, that stands out about him is that he's six three. Otherwise, he just looks like every other Minnesota jabroni at a Saints game. Oh, not funny. Um, was there a lot of people like no, um, notice him like as well as you did, or? See, I don't know, because um, since he's from Minnesota, I feel like that definitely plays in his favor. People recognize his face, except, like I say, he just looks like a normal dude. Hmm. Yeah, like he, he's not 
uh, Everson Griffin out there, completely yoked out at 285 pounds. Like, he, he doesn't stand out physically in, in that manner. Or, uh, well, I feel like Harrison Smith is more well-recognized. Like, Harrison would be mobbed by the ladies there. Except uh, a lot of those same ladies were at the X at the Ed Sheeran concert. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, that's right. I think, yeah, you said that. Yeah. Yeah, he he must pull a lot of tail on the road for being a guy who's four foot two and ginger. It's all about the music. I, I, I think people it, love it. I think it is the music because what, is there any other profession where Ed Sheeran would put up the numbers that he does if he wasn't a musician, like a cobbler, like stone, like a like shoe cobbler, maybe farmer, weed farmer. I, I, no, I, I, I go, I go American farmer. I'm making it some farm girls. I, I feel like if you're a drug dealer and you only pedal in one specific kind of drug, I know that's rare. It's best to diversify if you're a drug dealer. But I feel like if you're a weed dealer, what? that's the one that would get the most ladies on the side because you know they'll exchange. Because I, I don't think you want to be tapping into your customer base uh, if you're selling heroin. Or oh, no, if, you're, yeah. if you're selling no. Oxy, yep. or if you're selling Coke. Yep. Well, maybe Coke. It, it will end a lot quicker, no. though, if you do Coke. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, uh, so M- Muggsy did well. She had uh, one of those smoothies, and uh, also she, she, of course, had her popcorn. She freaking loves popcorn. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. All right. Let's do some news. You are fake news. Sir, Go ahead. can you... George Bush doesn't care about black people. I ain't got time to believe. You can't handle the truth. The news with Uncle Nick. All right, Nick, what's going on in the world today? Oh, nothing. Okay, no, okay. Okay. Okay, a number of good things here. Um, a little, we'll go a little political, some actual news, news, a little backstory here, in case you guys haven't followed. Uh, a couple states over the weekend, um, um, over budget disputes uh, with, um, you know, Trying to organize the state stuff. Uh, a couple states, I think it was Maine and New Jersey, lost um, had a, had to deal with a little brief, uh, you know, uh, shutdowns. Um, if you're in Minnesota, obviously a number of years ago we had a state shutdown. We were down for three weeks. But um, all right, back to the point. <laughs> Making headlines, a uh, little levity. Uh, Chris Christie, everyone's favorite governor of uh, New Jersey, was caught on a closed beach with his family. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty, uh, yeah, um, uh, for someone who's made a, f- a few headlines, uh, typically not for the better, um, this is now dubbed, quote, uh, Beach Gate. Of course, because of course it is. I, uh, I love that Chris Christie is just completely open about how corrupt he is, you know, with bridge, the bridge incident and also now this. And, like, this is just more funny because, Fourth of July weekend, New Jersey is famous for its beaches, and actually, he should have shut down the the Jersey beaches from about two thousand to whenever Jersey Shore ended. That's what he should have done. I've been a mention for that. He would be president if he did that. Um, yeah, but the, I mean, I he had to have known he would have been seen because a you could see Chris Christie from space. And everyone has drones nowadays. And you know that the news, like the beach shutdown on 4th of July weekend is going to be a big deal. So you know that news teams are going to be out there. They're going to have drones overhead. And all of a sudden, you see a fat guy and his two fat kids on a beach just plop down in, in like their stupid uh, folding chairs. Yeah, yeah. You don't think they're going to pick up on that? Yeah. And um, as of uh, the time when we quit. Uh, so either no. he's an idiot or he doesn't care. I think he doesn't care. Yeah. I, I, I can respect that he doesn't care though. He just doesn't care. And yeah. um and and to be fair, um as of now when we're recording this, New Jersey has broken the um the agreement, uh or they have settled the the state um mm-hmm. shutdown thing. So I mean so um for fourth of July itself, I believe everything is back open. But I th- this, this happened over the weekend and yeah, so coming in and Okay, one a couple of the pictures here, man, he has let's see not too many people there, maybe uh, ten family members, but like him just on the him just on his little lounger chair, and uh, <laughs> and from this Washington Post, the big question was like, did he get a tan? And obviously, and he was like, no, I didn't get a tan. But um, he's been quoted saying 
That's the way it goes. You run for governor, you can have the residence. <laughs> See, I, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. I, I love that he's completely just like what because you know a couple of years ago, Chris Christie was this big Jersey tough guy. He, he looks like um, uh, looks like an uh, enforcer Luke, for the mafia. Yeah, yeah. Something. He look he looks exactly like Luca Brasi from uh, Godfather, the one who gets choked out and then shat. He actually in, in the book they point out that he shats himself. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. Which. If you're getting choked out with some piano wire, I can see that. Anyways, uh, but now he's just like a, a punchline because I, I know he's really being defined by that, uh, and I'm thinking he's more – he doesn't care as opposed to stupid, but I, I actually wish that he was like, all right, so ki- my kids are bugging me. They want to go to the beach, so we're going to go to the beach, but we have to be incognito about it. And then all of a sudden he sees that drone zzz, flying over. <laughs> Roll credits. Executive producer Larry David. Oh my god! Um, yeah, um, I love it when what's his name would play him in SNL, Bobby Monaghan. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, I mean, he has now become like the butt of jokes, and um, I, and I don't know, like I don't know how he, um, I'm not, I don't know anything about the political system in New Jersey. Yep. Like I don't know how many years he's been governor now, but you'd have to think that that maybe his time has come. But otherwise, maybe he has a big. Fan base in New Jersey. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know the. I'm not. I don't know the political field out there. Yeah. Yeah. What's next? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. From CNN, uh, Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean ride loses its wench auction. What? Um. Okay. So uh, the story was kind of hard for me because I've never been to uh, Disney World. I never um, been to Disneyland once, uh, but Disney World. Um, has a popular ride, the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Um, a number of people, if you've been there, have probably been on it, and obviously it spawned a great series of movies, but... Well, one good movie and four others. Um, I would say the last one was actually pretty good, but anyway. They playing the ride. Yeah. Anyway, one of the most popular rides is uh, Pirates of the Caribbean ride, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of... Um, uh, it's, it's all live animation, but there's a lot of fancy art. Or, I don't know if I'm using the word fancy. But uh, they they recently just changed uh, one of the artist um, drawings where there's pictures of uh, of people being of women being sold as wenches. Something that um, you know. You might not have really noticed or cared about until you really take a step back and like, oh, there's an artist prediction uh, edition of, uh, of you know, wenches being sold, you know, as kind of homage to as that were the times back in days of yeah. piracy. So <laughs> they finally got rid of it. Well, I, I understand also they probably have slave auctions, and I'm glad that they didn't put that in. Because even back then, like, they were cognizant of, it's like, yeah, we probably shouldn't do that. But... The this whole thing, like I understand, we're in a politically correct world, and uh, I, I feel like this was a mission from someone. Like they would work fifty hours a week and just wake up every morning. It's like today's the day. Today is the day, Walt. I'm going to take down your empire, and you shall remove the selling of the wenches from the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Even though I think the Pirates of the Caribbean ride actually kind of sucks. Because all it is is like a lazy river, and then you watch these animatronic robots go back and forth. It, it's basically like an extended Chuck E. Cheese, uh, except you're in a canoe. Okay, as I said, I've yeah. never been on. Is this where they do the whole yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for yeah. me? Is that yeah. okay? Yeah. Same one. Okay, all right, interesting. Okay, uh, let's see. I think this was in Disney World. I don't think. It was, oh, uh, it might be Disneyland. Okay. Yeah. Hey, do. You, all right. This is really dumb, but this is how I always remember that Disneyland is in California and Disney World is in Florida. It, not because it would be easy to remember that one is one place and one's the other, but in the movie Bulletproof, they're in California. It's the one with Damon Wayans oh, and Adam yeah. Sandler, yeah. and they're like partners in crime, except Damon Wayans undercover. Uh, but when the cop pulls him over, uh, Adam Sandler, <laughs> they said, sir, why are you speeding? Uh, well... I'm taking my, uh, my my partner here, who's mentally challenged, to Disneyland, and then Adam Sandler's like Disneyland. That's that's how I remember that Disneyland's forgot, in California. I forgot about that. <laughs> that was a good movie. the The yeah. whole buddy cop 
thing of the of the nineties where they're they're trying to capture the magic of lethal weapon, you know, the, the white guy and the black guy of um uh that movie Bulletproof, um uh, Money Talks, Charlie Sheen and Chris Tucker. The nothing to lose. Nothing to lose with Tim Robbins and Martin nope. Lawrence. Those are all good movies. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. They're very entertaining. Um yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised there aren't any, you know, those like like multi packaged like DVDs mm. things. I feel like that's where they kind of belong because yeah. I mean, as fun as you know, you and I love them. You know, I don't think they were like multi million dollar successful. I mean, there weren't there weren't sequels and it that genre kind of ended. Yeah. I mean, I I think Bruce Willis and uh, what is it, Tracy Morgan oh, was in yeah. that one, but that was Cop out. so pan and so. Considered like one of the worst movies ever, so I don't know. I just, I feel like that magic. I I feel like it's gonna forever remain in the '90s. All right. Well, congratulations. No more selling of the wenches. We'll we'll just have to barter them, which is fine. All right. What's next? <laughs> all right. Um. All right. Futurama is a, I think a very underrated show. Um, yeah. I think uh, you know, except for the Seymour Dog episode, because I refuse to watch that episode because it, it, it makes you cry. Brings up the feels. No. And uh, you know, I don't know with me and Andy, I think you know, f- for me, you know, Family Guy will always be my go-to quotable, lovable show. Um, Simpsons, timeless classic. But Futurama, I f- I feel like it's a you know doesn't get as much love and attention as it does, but it has a really good f- cult following and. If Futurama's ever on TV, I'll definitely always watch it. What, what about Zoidberg? Zoidberg. Oh. Come on, Zoidberg. I passed it right to you. Ugh. I've had it with this game. I'm going for a scuttle. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, what's breaking news right now is that... Um, Everyone's favorite Netflix um, are gonna lose Futurama, and that's uh, that's uh, heartbreaking because it's coming know, off of streaming. It's coming off of the streaming part. Now, is this like D, uh, Disney always did? Is like it's going into the vault and never be available again, and then they bring it back five years later for sales. Um, no, I think it. it I, I think it has something to do with Fox. Um, its contract ran up. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's that because it sounds like in this article from SlashFilms.com that um, a lot of Fox programming is being uh, taken away. I think you know <clears throat> a lot of it might have to do with um, a lot of these uh, network um, programs, Fox, ABC, NBC, mm-hmm. are trying to do their own streaming stuff. So uh, it might yeah. be a, it might be uh, it might be one of those one of those issues. Uh, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so sorry, I was yelling at my computer. Proceed. <laughs> yeah, as, as I said, you know, I mean, uh, you know, Netflix, you know, great thing. Everyone's on Netflix nowadays, and mm-hmm. you know, it's uh, if I, I don't know, I hope I'm hoping this is not a sign of uh, of Netflix losing a lot of shows, but I mean, you know, Fox wants to get paid, so we'll see if. Uh, if people can still uh, get it through other streaming purposes. Well, m- maybe they'll go to Hulu because I feel like Hulu is more in bed with the networks than Netflix is. And uh, I think Hulu's ra- ramping up. They they have a uh, live TV now as well. Uh, okay. So they're trying to copy the sling model. So that could be it because I think I think it's a bad idea unless you're a premium channel like HBO. Like you can have your standalone streaming. Mm-hmm. But I don't think anyone's going to specifically go to Fox streaming or CBS streaming. You know, it's like... Now, go, go to the place where everyone is together, as opposed to having to download all these various apps. Oh, no, I, I completely agree with you. Yeah. All right. Um, let's do the the last one. All right. <laughs> I saw this ad the other day. Um, for those of you who like to do, uh, um, you know, um, Uber, you know, if you have to if you, uh, take your lift, you know, to get to place A to place B, what if you need to use the bathroom? Um, Charmin, um, everyone's favorite toilet paper. Cha, cha, cha. (laughs) Yeah, um, has invented something, and as far as I know, this isn't a fake thing. This is actually going to happen. Um, Van Gogh, an on-demand private restroom, currently in New York City. So, um, um, you download an app, and if you're somewhere in New York City, and, you know, maybe if you're not by your home, you know, a lot of people... 
Only like using um, your home toilets. And I completely understand and agree with you. Uh, but, you know, if you're out, out and about and, you know, you really need to, you really need to go, this, uh, this giant van, this, like, conversion van, um, built with a toilet with a private bathroom will come to your location so you can do your business. I think this is long overdue. Uh, I'm Part cu- of the pun, do. <laughs> I'm curious because as of right now, I can't find the uh, any pricing. You we know? all go to the bathroom every day. In the morning, after morning coffee, especially after morning coffee. <laughs> Talk about getting things going. At work, after dinner, woo, that curry was hot. Bottom line, we spend a lot of time going. It's one of life's essentials. Charmin wants to help turn this simple need into a more enjoyable routine. The relief, the calm, the clean, the comfort. (sighs) After all, there's nothing healthy about holding things in. Oh, wait, this is just a commercial about... This isn't about... Charmin. Damn it, this is from 2010. Anyways, yeah, I... I, uh, Because I was wondering, um, because if you have, like, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, I, I do not... But if I did, it would be really frustrating. Like if you're out in a commercial area, say you're at a, uh, you're out and about, like not like at a mall where it's going to have a dedicated restroom area, but places where you really have to go. Except you can't. It feels weird to ask to use their bathroom unless mm-hmm. you buy something. It's like no bathroom for customers only. You buy something now, five dollar minimum. To get, you know, and then you got that stupid key, which is attached to a nightstick, and then you try to jiggle it, and then the, the bathroom's all full of crap, anyways. But the, yeah, I feel like having this, but you're gonna need a lot of them because, say, you're in the Twin Cities, and there's only three of them, and the clo- and you're in, I don't know, Blaine, I don't know, you're playing soccer or something, and then you really have to take a dump, but the closest one is in Bloomington. I don't think you're gonna be able to hold it that long. Yeah, and, um, yeah, no, I agree. And uh, God, New York, I bet you know hundreds of them are. And then think about this: if this is a mobile mobile thing, and you're on, uh, okay, I'm, I'm so bad with New York, so I apologize. Like 26th Avenue, or, say 26th or 23rd Street, or like mm. the corner of that. So if this thing, if this van comes out to get to you, I bet there's going to be a bunch of uh, neighboring people who might want to jump in on this game as well. And I don't know if you, it, you know, I'm just curious, and I cannot find. For the life of me here on the websites of researching this, the price. Because this cannot be cheap to functionally, you know, like well, make money. I, I mean, it's the, the law of demand. Like, if, you, if you're if you in a spot where you can't make it to a public restroom, I, I, I think you'll you'll pay exponentially. I, I'm very curious how much. I don't know. Like, how much, like it, how, how much would you spend for a public toilet? Let's say you and I are down in Minneapolis. Downtown um, Minneapolis. Well, is it number one or two? Because uh, one is significantly higher price than the other. Oh, I'm going to go number two. I- ironic. Yeah, ironically, one is. Uh, yeah. uh, so if you have to go number two, it's coming. Like uh, the turtles uh, ready to, like your prairie dog and yourself, the turtles ready to go, you're a little turtle. Uh, 20 bucks. Yeah, oh, wow. As opposed to just completely shatting yourself. Because mm-hmm. if you shat yourself, that's crossing the Rubicon. You know, there isn't. You never just slightly shat yourself. Like if you, it's all, it's all if you do, you're, you're you're letting go. Wow. Well, it's, yeah. it's like you can't be partially pregnant. You can't partially shat your pants. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny to think about. And no, this is a it, this is a good thing because I, initially I thought like won't people just destroy these bathrooms and rub Dookie all over the walls and stuff? But no, after every usage, you know, you go back and inspect the bathroom and. Since it's like Uber, you'll have someone's card on file. So if someone defiles and destroys the bathroom, you'd be like, oh, whoops, charged. Oh, yeah, that, may, that makes complete sense. And, yeah, and it looks like the, these things are fully staffed. Mm-hmm. So, um, as I, you know, so I'm, you know, I was kind of wondering here, you know, if you, if you saw this downtown, you know, whether, whether, whether or not you called it, I wonder if there would be an option for, like, people, like, walking by, like, oh, Hey, let me let me use the bathroom here quick. This is, looks like a nicer place than you know at the club. I hey, wonder, you know, you don't want to take a crap at Cowboy Jacks. I don't want to take a crap at Cowboy Jacks. Yeah, because you take crap home from no. That's <laughs> nice. The news with Uncle Dick. From the entire Channel Four News team, I'm Veronica Corningstone, and I'm Ron Burgundy. Go. 
yourself, San Diego. So there's a spectrum of life experiences, and shatting your pants is on one end. Sleeping on a Lisa mattress is definitely on the other. Shipped right to your door. 100 nights guaranteed, or your money back, no questions asked. And I've had this mattress for four or five months now. Uh, it, it's awesome. I've noticed that the, the wife has said that she gets better sleep, and I, I, I get a much better night's sleep because the mattress, it's firm, it breathes, and it's just so good. Uh, Lisa.com slash purpleftw. That's the other show, but that's okay. And if you use code Andy, you get 75 bucks off your purchase. Plus, right now, they got their summer sale going on, so that's none, another 100 bucks off double dip, 175 off any size. Get it. Uh, Nick's going to Lisa mattress. Oh, yeah, yeah. I cannot wait once I get my condo, which is, it's still, it's going to happen. I'm getting mm. one, goddammit. And there goes our explicit rating. <laughs> Damn it. You can bleep it up. Lisa.com. L E E S A.com. Code A N D Y A N D. 75 bucks off. Uh, all right, Nick, what you got coming up this week? Um, <coughs> a very mild week, you know, a short week at work. I'm hoping to. Um, I'm hoping to uh, finalize uh, my condo stuff this weekend. So, knock on wood that everything goes through. Yeah. Well, there we go. I'll be back tomorrow with Josh Peltzo, live from Blue Door. I get the show on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. And tell a friend, spread the word. That's how we keep growing. That's how we're extending breakout to new lands. Uh, tell them about Bull with Andy Carl. No, tell them it's. Um, it's kind of like morning radio, except it's way better because we only have one commercial break, and also we're interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, producer Allie, for making me not sound so stupid today. But for Nick, I'm Andy Carlson saying "and young sign our and bye bye." We'll talk to you tomorrow. Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best daily podcast. Download the show on iTunes. Everyone's middle name is Jerome.